First of all, I believe there are four types of students among you, right? Four types of students. Well, the first type of the students, they are the ones whose theory as well as problems. They are unable to understand the theory portion as well as they are unable to do the problems. That is to your type 1 category. Your type 2. Type 2 students, they'll be good in understanding the theoretical part of the physics, but they won't be good in doing the problems. They won't be good in applying the theory into the problems, right? They won't be able to solve the problems of the same concepts which they would have discussed in the theoretical part. That is type 2. Type 3, their theory, right? They are easily, they, they can easily understand the theoretical part. They can even do the classroom problems. After your teacher discuss the theory, they are able to do the classroom problems. But after that, they are unable to solve the new questions. This is your type 3 category. Your type 4, they are able to understand the theoretical part. They are able to solve the classroom problems. They are able to solve the new questions as well. But when they write the chapter wise test, when they write the test series, they are unable to solve the questions, right? These are the four types of the students, right? These are the four different, different types of the students, right? Who have asked me basically how to make their physics stronger. What all things they have to consider if they want to score really high when it comes to physics, if they really want to score 160 plus in physics. So my dear students, there are certain things which I've mentioned over here and I would want you guys to remember, analyze all these things and try to apply all these things from now onwards while you're studying. My dear students, I believe majority of you are watching the online lectures, right? Perfect. And your online lecture duration will be, I believe, one and a half hours to two hours. Perfect. Well, after you watch one of the lecture of your physics, let's say you are uh, watching the lecture from 9 to 10.30 in the morning for the subject physics. Okay. Well, after this particular lecture, my dear students, you have to take one hour of time. You have to take one hour of time to revise the same thing. Whatever your teacher has taught you in the lecture, right? And since that lecture is over from 9 to 10.30, so from 10.30 to 11.30, you are not going to jump into one more subject. You are not going to do something new. You are going to revise the same thing. Revise the same thing. Whatever your teacher has taught you in that one and a half hour duration, right? Revise the same thing again in one hour. Okay. Now, what all things you have to do in that one hour? Whatever question your teacher has solved in the class, try to solve the same questions again without seeing the solution. That is the, that's how you can remember their approach. That's how you can remember their approach. That's how you will remember how to deal with those questions. So first of all, whatever questions your teacher is going to solve in the classroom, right? Once the session ends, once the lecture ends, right? Take one hour of your time and in that one hour, try to revise the same things again. Try to solve the same questions again without seeing the solution this time, right? And once you're done with that, in the same one hour, my dear students, you can try to create some new questions. You can try to create some new questions. You can, you just need to look at the same questions again and think differently. Think differently. Try to create two more questions, right? You are going to do that. You are not going to uh, use any book for that. Perfect. You are going to use your brain and try to create some different types of questions out of the same questions which your teacher has solved in the class, right? For example, let's say I'm teaching something. I'm giving you the value of x and I'm asking you to, I'm, I'm giving you the value of x and I'm asking you to get the value of y, right? When you take one hour after your lecture, right? Think in different perspective. What if y was given and x was to be calculated, right? Think like that. Think like that. Like. Try to create the new questions out of the same questions which your teacher would have solved, right? In the class. Perfect. And my dear students, this is the best way of understanding physics. You need to teach yourself. That's what I used to do when I was preparing for my J examination back in 2013. Right? Just teach yourself whatever concept your teacher has taught in the classroom. Try to teach the same thing to yourself. Right? It, it, it seems awkward, but it's not. Trust me, give it a try. Give it a try just once. Trust me, you are going to make your learning easier. That's how you can understand the concept better. Imagine, imagine right after the, your lecture ends, imagine there are a lot of students sitting in front of you. 
and you're teaching them, for example. It is not necessary that you're teaching on the bigger screen, right? Imagine you're teaching on the notebook. That's how you can remember each and every concept. That's how you can remember the approach of different problems. And that is the best way of learning, which I have done when I used to prepare for my J examination. Right? Point number one. Point number two, your homework questions. I have seen 99% of the students taking homework questions very lightly. Whatever question your teacher gives you in the class, right, as the homework, majority of the students do, do not solve them, right? But my dear students, solving homework questions, solving homework questions, it is one more important factor by means of which you can make your physics stronger, right? See, a teacher in the classroom, he cannot show you all the types of the problems from a particular concept. He can show you maybe five types of the problems and tell you to do the remaining three types on your own, but you do not do them, right? And you, 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 you avoid those three concepts. You avoid those three more types of the problems. Perfect. And later on, you suffer because of that. So try to solve all the homework questions, which includes your DPP questions as well. Which includes your DPP questions as well. Perfect. My dear students, right? And, 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 and. How exactly you need to basically solve these homework questions? How exactly you need to solve these DPPs? There's a particular way of solving a question in physics. There's a particular way of solving the question in physics. First of all, you need to learn how to read the question. You need to learn how to read the question in physics, particularly. My dear students, while learning the question, right, you need to break this particular question into, into certain fractions, into certain parts. Try to relate those parts. Try to relate those parts. And if you could try to relate those parts, so you are reading a question, right? The question is of like three, four lines. You broke it into three parts. This is part one, the data that's given. And here, this is one more thing that's given. Here, this is one more thing that is given. Is there any relation between these three parts? Have I studied this before, right? Once you try to relate those small, small parts, you're halfway done, my dear students. Trust me on that. And the best part in your neat physics is, in one question, only one concept is involved. In one question, they do not ask you more than two, three concepts. While if you compare your J advanced examination, in one question, there'll be three, four concepts involved. But the best part in your examination is, in one question, there'll be only one concept involved. That is the best part here. And you just need to relate these small, small fractions and my dear students, eventually, you'll be able to solve it, this question. Perfect. You will be halfway done. Trust me on that. It helps a lot. So try to use this particular thing as well. Now, moving on to a few more things. I am pretty much sure majority of the students watching me right now, I know you'll be avoiding this particular thing, NCRT in-text questions. I'm not telling you to solve NCRT exercise questions in physics because your exercise questions are somewhat difficult. They are of your JE means JE advanced level, right? When it comes to your NCRT exercise questions in physics. But my dear students, you have to do NCRT in-text questions for sure, right? But, 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 you're not supposed to solve the NCRT in-text questions right after watching the lecture. No. Once your chapter is complete, let's say you're start, starting with units and dimensions. Once your complete chapter of units, dimensions is over, then you are going to jump into the NCRT in-text questions. Remember this particular thing. And let me tell you, my dear students, your 30% of the physics paper directly will be, directly and directly will be from the NCRT in-text questions. Plus beyond that, you can check, you can analyze your previous year papers when it comes to neat physics, right? And my dear students, while doing the NCRT in-text questions at the end, once you have completed the lecture of a particular chapter, right? Then you are going to the NCRT in-text and at the same time, you can, you are supposed to read the NCRT lines as well. And this is something which I've seen majority of the students skip it. My dear students, NCRT is one amazing book. But why students avoid NCRT? Because without Without watching the lectures, without completing the chapter from the lectures, they directly jump into NCRT and there they won't be able to understand a single thing. But first, you, when you complete all the lectures of a chapter, then go to your NCRT. You are going to fall in love with the language of NCRT. Trust me on that. The way things are written there. And keep on underlining those important, important things. The way you do it when it comes to your biology as well as your inorganic chemistry. Okay? And this is one more important thing. My dear students, you are 20% of the physics paper is directly formula based. If you remember the formula, you can solve those 20% of the questions in the physics paper. And how, there are a lot of, there are a lot of basically formulas in physics, right? 
my dear students for that you have to make the formula sheets for every single chapter there should be like one sheet one page or maximum two pages which should include all the formulas of a particular chapter all the derivations of a particular chapter all the important conclusions of a particular chapter they should be framed in one sheet and you have to every day take 15 to 20 minutes of your time to revise those formulas that's how that's how this 20 percent of the paper will be done and dusted by you and my dear students if you do not do that if you do not take your 15 to 20 minutes every day to revise those formula sheets to revise those short notes then be ready to forget all of them right they do not think of this 20 percent of your paper perfect so it is my suggestion to you guys to make the formula sheets for every single chapter every single chapter try to revise the minimum for 50 to 20 minutes every single day that's how you are going to remember the formulas that's how you can do this 20 percent of the questions when it comes to your neat physics examination the last and the most important thing which students miss out i know you'll be trying to solve a question and it'll be taking an hour to solve this question right but my dear students in your actual neat examination you exactly have to spare one minute of time to solve one question right majority of the students they think their preparation is up to the mark they have killed this book they have solved this book but in the actual examination they fell they feel short of time why is that because they do not solve the timer based question my dear students you have to select the timers exactly while solving a particular question you have to select a timer basically you have to select a fixed time let's say see it's 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 very simple you see in not in the first go you'll be able to solve the question in one minute not in the first go no let it take five minutes in the first go let it take five minutes to solve one particular question in physics in the first go but but my dear students when you try to solve the same question again after a week or uh, or two weeks you should be in a position to solve this question in a minute you should be in a position to solve this question in a minute so timer based questions are really important see what majority of the students do they enter into the neat examination they think the paper is difficult but when they try to solve the same question at home they think the paper was easy what happened in the examination hall my dear students that thing happens only because you do not practice the timer based question you try to solve the question as per your convenience right you take as much time as possible right you do it you do it during your preparation but it's better to select the I mean to select the questions and try to solve them right in a proper time frame that is again one more important thing which I did not skip at my time of JE preparation which you are not going to skip to and I believe if you are just going to remember these four to five things trust me trust me from today itself you are going to do that my dear students you are easily going to score good marks good 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 marks when it comes to your physics just follow proper sequence your lecture followed by your uh, followed by your class notes right solving the same questions again what your teacher has done following the dpp right following the dpp once you are done with the dpp then your pyqs pyqs of your neat uh, five years as well as j means five years right and at the end the chapter wise test you are done and if you are going to follow this particular sequence for all the chapters of physics trust me trust me you are easily going to score 160 plus in your physics when it comes to